Ladies and gentlemen, hey, hi, how you doing? Welcome back to the channel. Thank you so much for stopping by. Just prior to the launch of season four, I was able to sit in on a call with Activision and several different developers from these studios working this year, whether it's Sledgehammer, Treyarch, Raven, between multiplayer, zombies, and Warzone. And per usual, if you're an active viewer here on the channel, you probably know that these dev calls are full of previews and a little bit more extra detail and extra insight into what to expect with the coming season throughout, you know, the first few weeks, the mid-season update and beyond, and then occasionally some ex info as well that we just don't have otherwise so big thank you to Activision for allowing me to sit in on these calls it's a privilege to be able to do so and I'm glad that I can be part of the bridge of transparency here if you will to relay information to you guys then obviously because of the uh, like connection that we have with these calls be able to relay things to the devs as well that you guys may want to shine some more light on so thanks all around to Activision and to you guys for putting me in the position to be here and be able to talk about these things but when it comes comes to the season four dev call we got some rather interesting information both on some things in regards to a handful of the updates coming this season but then also some things that may or may not be coming long term for the game as well so initially diving right in here a couple of previews for some mid-season update content that we didn't really get as much detail about throughout the various blogs and uh trailers and whatnot the get high mode or parkour course map that we've seen uh throughout the past couple of weeks or so is getting a revamp here in season four it's going to be the get higher map this time and with this rather than it just being like a fun little gimmicky mode that's very straightforward you try and climb up and try and beat the map and it is what it is you don't really get anything for doing so it appears they're actually going to be introducing some rewards for the get higher LTM some animated camos and some blueprints is what it looked like based off the previews that they showed us unfortunately I can't show those on screen here but they were some very very cool animated camos that were shown as rewards for get higher that uh they made it seem like maybe you could find like maybe in game by going off course or doing something specific on the map or just by beating it we're gonna have to wait and see but it actually is bringing some more meaningful uh you know rewards and gameplay value to that mode so I think that's pretty cool Cool, and I'm definitely looking forward to that. Another mode specifically for multiplayer that I think is going to be really interesting is the mutations mode coming up uh, at some point in season. And this is going to be a very gimmicky LTM, but also a very, very wild one as well. Maybe one of the more memorable ones of this year, because this is basically mutants versus humans. For half the match, you're going to be playing as a mutant and then midway through you'll switch sides and you'll play as a human. And this mode kind of has everything. Uh, you're going to be able to have super jumps available like from zombies royale and war zone there's going to be mutant rage that allows you to see players marked through walls at times if you are playing as a mutant you actually end up getting to play as like a radioactive dog and that has all sorts of its own power-ups and everything there is a mutant that has invisibility as one of the power-ups so you can go invisible momentarily or temporarily i guess and end up taking players out like that it's going to be a wild mode. My only concern here, though, is that every time they introduce modes like this that have these crazy power ups or uh, extra things like that, those power ups then get turned into cheats that hackers and cheaters use. They bring it over to Warzone or whatever else. We've seen it happen time and again this year with the power ups on Fortune's Keep or some of the stuff in the arcade mode. So hopefully this doesn't turn into something that cheaters can use to their advantage where they have super jumps and the uh, ability to go invisible and stuff like that but the mode itself just at its core looks absolutely wild and is another one that i'm definitely looking forward to we also got some additional details on some of the upcoming weapons throughout season four uh some details here that we don't have otherwise or we wouldn't find anywhere else but the devs did uh explain things a little bit more thoroughly and it's some interesting insight for sure so as we dive into this and the remainder of the conversation here today quick reminder if you are new to the channel every single day this is your one-stop shop for all things going on in cod whether it's news updates meta breakdowns it's all right here so feel free to hit that subscribe button and turn on those post notifications and of course if you enjoy this video do me a favor and drop a like on it it really is appreciated as always much love to everyone who takes the time to do so 
But as far as some additional weapon details go, uh, the Spaz 12, they did confirm, is going to basically have a toggle ability on it when it comes to the fire rate, uh, in a sense. You're going to be able to use this as a semi-auto shotgun, but then also as a pump action shotgun. So depending on how you want to play with the Spaz 12 when it ends up releasing, you can kind of pick your poison there. There's going to be benefits and then also some drawbacks, you know, some pros and some cons to using either of those, uh, you know, fire actions. So you can kind of fit whatever what works well for your gameplay, build it out for that and play to that strength. Uh, you know, one might be way more overpowered and objectively more meta. The other one might just be more gimmicky, but it's kind of cool that you do have the option there. And that's not really something we've seen a ton of with, uh, you know, shotguns in specific. So that's kind of cool. Also, the Thumper aftermarket part for the RGL-80, they did detail this a little bit more. We know it's going to be uh, basically enhancing the projectiles and whatnot, but essentially, rather than it being sort of an arcing uh, shot when you fire out your projectile, this is going to be more of like a line drive in a sense is how they described it. It's going to have much better velocity and you're going to be able to use things like sticky grenades, impact grenades, and this requires a lot more accuracy when using it. So it actually makes the RGL a little bit more difficult uh, to use in general if you're going for straight up kills now you can use it to cause chaos and launch impact grenades all over the place but unless you're either landing shots at an opponent's feet or hitting them with a direct impact it's not going to be as easy to straight up just get kills with it so there are some pros and cons to this as well but it's going to be really interesting to see how that actually impacts the rgl and if it makes it worth using outside of just quickly throwing it on to get some camos done like i imagine the vast majority of us are doing for that gun in specific the devs also talked a little bit about zombies here, but uh, curiously enough, it wasn't a whole lot about season four. We know that the unstable rift update and everything is coming later on this season. Uh, that's going to be intended for end game players looking for a bit more of a challenge. There's going to be predetermined numbers of waves that grow harder and harder with each wave within those unstable rifts. So kind of like round based zombies as like a mini game inside of zombies as a whole mode. So that's kind of cool. There'll be multiple opportunities to unlock these in gameplay, but the devs did specify that their next quote unquote chapter for zombies, the next significant storyline based update is planned for season five reloaded. So if you're a zombies player this year and you were looking for a lot of stuff to happen throughout season four or potentially even at the launch of season five, do not get your hopes up. Uh, we've seen this trend for several seasons now. Zombies is not really a focus point anymore. Treyarch, it seems like, is largely focused on Black Ops 6 and their zombie storyline there and all their gameplay there. And this is just kind of holding us over until then. So I wouldn't expect any major updates for zombies really for the rest of the year. But just as a general PSA, they did mention Season 5 Reloaded as like that next main point that we want to look out for for their next chapter as they described it. Uh, then lastly here, a couple of things came out of the Q&A portion of this call. Nothing too crazy, but a few answers to things that, again, we otherwise would not have had access to if it weren't for these creator calls. So they were asked about the prestige camos that we're now seeing every single season, whether it's the animated obsidian or obviously one trick from season three. We know we're also going to have a prestige camo available for season five and for season six. And with this, it was asked, hey, if I go through and I unlock the season three, season four, season five, and season six prestige camos, is there going to be any grand mastery reward for doing that? Or if I get every prestige camo on one specific weapon, like I do them all for my battle 27, is there going to be a mastery reward for that? And the answer is no. These are individual re uh, weapon rewards and weapon camos that are meant to entice you to use your favorite guns more to earn these prestige camos. There's not going to be like a completionist or a mastery reward for doing every prestige camo. So if you were thinking about doing that because there might be a hidden reward, hopefully I saved you some time here with that one. And then also they were asked about big map battle royale rotation. So obviously in Resurgence, we're rotating plenty of maps, whether it's Vondel or uh, Fortune's Keep, Rebirth, etc. The same thing was asked about big map BR, standard battle royale. Hey, could we ever rotate, let's say, Almazra and then Urzikstan? And the devs basically said that while yes, it'd be a really cool thing to be able to do, there are no plans for it because of technical stuff with how big the maps are, how expensive the resources would be for that to be a thing they'd have to consistently keep both maps updated and have them both logged in the files up to date every single patch and that would just create too much chaos in the back end for both the file size of the game and then everything they'd have to uh you know divert resources to in order to sustain that so currently it's not something they're looking into as cool as it could have been for sure 
who knows if that's going to change down the road they did mention hey technology is always evolving so things could change maybe in the future we do get verdansk rotation and urzikstan and almazra so on and so forth but for now no change of plans with how the big map is going to be approached it's just going to be urzikstan for the foreseeable future and all that being said those are all the new details changes and updates that the devs revealed in addition to all the basic season four stuff we already knew about that's gonna wrap things up if you enjoyed the video do me a favor and drop a like on it and if you're new here be sure to hit that subscribe button on your way out to guarantee you are always up to date with all things going on in cod but once again thank you so much for tuning in and until next time take it easy have an awesome rest of your day and i'll catch you later peace out